It all started with the launch of the Nintendo 3DS. And by that, I mean it didn't. While the 3DS launched here in North America in March of 2011, the Nintendo eShop wasn't active yet. We had to wait until June 6th of that year for a system update enabling the feature. It's okay, the 3DS launched with Rayman 3D. Well, there goes my productivity for the next two months. And finally, BAM, the Nintendo eShop launched. But gotta say, pretty pathetic how the system launched without a digital storefront. The Wii did, the Nintendo DSi did, this is like showing up to the party without potato salad. Sure hope nobody notices. Put some f***ing pants on! And regardless, the Nintendo 3DS's eShop was finally open for business, offering nearly all of the software from the Nintendo DSi shop outside of these games here. Damn it! Classic titles from previous systems a part of the virtual console branding, specifically Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, downloadable trailers for upcoming 3DS releases, and of course, original software and applications made specifically for the system. There are pretty much only two 3DS games on the eShop at launch. One wasn't a 3DS game, the other wasn't a 3DS game. Those being 3D Classics Excite Bike and Pokedex 3D. Now, these were both free, at least for a limited time. Excite Bike was sort of a piece offering to 3DS users for patiently not touching their handhelds since launch. Pokedex was more so a 3D model viewer for the Pokemon from Pokemon Black and White. This is 100% just a polished tech demo to fiddle around with and nothing more, but I will say, the graphics did impress me back in the day, at least compared to previous Nintendo handhelds. Is that a whole ass circle? 3D Classics Excite Bike was the main course here, and it's the classic NES title remade for stereoscopic 3D, but they went even further than that, putting it in widescreen, revamping the the track editor, all while retaining the same look and feel of the 8-bit original. I was so damn pumped to get 3D Classics Excite Bike for free that I finally bought a 3DS for myself in August of 2011 when the offer expired and I had to buy it for $6. And that's when I discovered coping. Honestly, during this time, the classic Game Boy and Game Boy Color titles were keeping me busy. Super Mario Land, Donkey Kong, Link's Awakening DX, these games were seldom re-released, especially in comparison to the junk on NES. Hey, do you want to play Donkey Kong 3 again? Ugh, for the millionth time. Yes. Even if a good chunk of these Game Boy games didn't hold up the greatest, they were definitely fun to look back on and see how Nintendo's handheld lineage all began. Or there just wasn't anything to do with the system in 2011, because I'm gonna talk about trailers now. Something I remember doing a lot was downloading game trailers off of the eShop. This was cool because you could view them in 3D, getting a better idea as to how the game would look on the 3DS's display. But I always liked keeping these on my system, mainly because a lot of these used working titles and prototype logos, so it's kind of a cool digital keepsake from the build up to launch for these titles. Like when Mario Tennis Open was just called Mario Tennis? Got simpler times, now the police report's longer. And that was pretty much it for the Nintendo eShop on 3DS at launch. The most exciting thing, honestly, was getting all the DSi shop content, the Game Boy games, and of course, the presentation. You ever go to a store and feel guilty for not buying anything? I feel like that every time I enter the 3DS eShop. I mean, the music that plays isn't in your face like the Wii or DSi shop. Rather, it's so soothing and comfy, all while that damn shopping bag has organs. No other storefronts kept me this calm during that situation. I always liked how during the download screen you could twist and turn the icon in 3D, how upgraded the entire visual experience was from Nintendo's previous digital stores. I mean, they have whole ass banners, categories, we're no longer using fake currency, which is definite growth. Sir, I'll give you seven wee cladoodles for that. Nah, now we use real world money and get taxed real world dollars because we're real world citizens now. This was the moment Nintendo fans were finally tried as adults. But that was pretty much it for the eShop at launch and frankly, almost the entirety of 2011. The only things that ever seemed to pop up here were Game Boy Virtual Console titles. Now, I'm not really one to complain. I think I react in the exact way Nintendo wants their fans to with these games. But it was just odd considering the Nintendo DSi Shop had the exact opposite issue. I thought it was weird how they had no legacy virtual console software on there, and just original DSi releases. So with the 3DS, it was pretty much nothing but virtual console software. And even then, it was basically just Game Boy. In the entirety of 2011, we only got two Game Boy Color games. More entries in the 3D Classics line released throughout the year, Xevious, Urban Champion, Twin B, and Kirby's Adventure, with Kid Icarus launching in 2011 as the last 3D Classic Nintendo release. I've already talked about these at length. However, they were a core part of the eShop in those early days. They definitely varied in quality and the games they picked to convert to 3D, I mean, damn, I was hoping they would do stick on a screen. Could have improved it a bit. Cause that's a damn branch. Outside of playing old games, however, the 3DS could do all kinds of other things. 
Happy Halloween. Applications! In July of 2011, we got Netflix and Nintendo Video. You know, it was kind of assumed Netflix on the 3DS would feature 3D movies. Much like how you'd assume I'm not f***ing pissed. Yeah, this was just a low-resolution Netflix viewer. It worked, though I remember it being incredibly slow. But if you wanted significantly less content, but content Taylor made for the 3DS, look no further than Nintendo Video. This was an app that would feature four short videos at a time, all viewable in 3D. New ones would replace the old every couple of days or so. Uh, they weren't archived, you couldn't save them, you couldn't go back and watch old videos. You'd open up the app, could watch the four videos on hand, and the next day you'd check it out, one of those videos or all of them could be gone and replaced by something completely different. The videos could have been animations, comedy skits, music videos, movie trailers, promotions for upcoming games, whatever the Nintendo interns felt that morning. A Happy Feet 2 trailer? It was either that or my friend's dance recital. The fact there were only four videos available at a time, I can see how that made it a bit more interesting, but that pretty much meant there was no reason to stay in this app for more than five minutes. Hey, I know my flaws. This format couldn't have been sustainable, so the app was discontinued in 2015, with Nintendo opting to just release 3D videos via the Nintendo eShop. Now, many would say they went above and beyond with effort and put a vast majority of the app's previous content on there. I'm not one of those many. Nintendo Zone, another free app from 2011 I downloaded and rarely used ever at all. I was busy. Basically would allow you to go to certain stores and download specific content, like trailers and items and games like Animal Crossing. Never did that. Pretty much only open this app at home to pass time by thinking, why did I open this app at home? But then there was Swap Note, released for free in December of 2011. This was created as a follow-up to PictoChat from the Nintendo DS. That was focused on sending messages to others in the same room as you. Swap Note took things a step further by allowing you to send messages to others around the world. The amount of customization you can add to your notes makes this a huge step up from PictoChat, along with how much character is infused with the host Nikki guiding us through things. This was a really cute application for crime. Yeah, because of the online functionality, many Swap Note users would find other swap note users to message via online forums. And that's how many users ended up getting horrible messages. So Nintendo's response was to just kill the app entirely, though randomly they updated it in December of 2020, calling it the Swap Note Remastered Update, which didn't do a damn thing. It was basically done just to patch things up behind the scenes to avoid hacking exploits. Why call it Swap No Remastered? I ask as if I'm brave enough to know. Well, we had apps, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and 3D Classics games all released via the eShop in 2011. What about exclusively downloadable 3DS video game software? For the whole year? Yeah, if it weren't for all the other fluff, the 3DS eShop would have had an absolutely pitiful launch year. I mean, my god! This is supposed to be the easy and cheap way to release games. Other than 3D Classics and Pokedex 3D, the first original 3DS downloadable game was Let's Golf 3D by Gameloft. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard of Wiccan Beliefs. Yeah, there's not much to this one. It's a basic as hell golf game, but I mean, I think you'd get your money out of this. Just because it's basic doesn't make it bad. Being developed by Gameloft does. But this, this is okay. Just nothing special by any means. Speaking of which, Nintendo's first major original eShop release, Freaky Forms. Released later in 2011, this game was focused on making your own creatures and trees. Finally, I can express myself. Yeah, this one was always a bit lighter. You get out of it, what you put into it. There's not much to do here other than make a guy and make him walk. This is one of those games I never played back in the day, but I'll see a small group of people reminisce like, God damn. That was the year of Freaky Forms. And it's easy to see why. If you really want to just dick around and make some abominations that you can then control, a Freaky Forms will appeal to you. And manipulative parents. The problem is, that's all Freaky Forms really is. It doesn't go further than, look, Ma, I made this. Oh, wow, that's great, sweetie. Please get a job. Cute little toy, but if you didn't play it during the early years of the 3DS as a youngin, it's pretty difficult to get invested in this today. Though Nintendo did release an expanded retail version later on, meaning Freaky Forms is forever physically preserved. Yeah, like these grapes. Now, I didn't pick this game up when it first launched because there was another Nintendo published eShop game released around the same time that garnered all of my attention. Pushmo, one of the best, 
just one of the best things. I mean, this is incredible. One of the first major eShot games from Nintendo, and it's this high quality? Keep in mind, digital games around this time are always presented as far lesser than the big boy retail releases. Anything Nintendo released themselves via WiiWare or DSiWare had a distinct lack of that given a sh flavor. But here comes Pushmo, an ingenious puzzle platformer where you have to pull and push blocks in the correct way in order to get to the top. The concept is so simple, yet has so much depth as the blocks can form pixel art, the ladders get involved, and it's controlled in 3D so you can move them from the sides or the front. There's a whole ass editor where you can make your own puzzles on top of the hundreds included in the game. Like, going from Nintendo's previous offerings on the Nintendo DSi shop where you'd be damn lucky to get a title screen, to this masterfully executed experience. It's jarring, but a very welcome change. It's obvious they were putting more effort into their digital offerings, making them less about being eShop games, and more so just games. But hey, what about Dear God Anybody But Nintendo? Well, we have two indie games that launch in the holiday of 2011, Mighty Switch Force and Six Hole Vs. Mighty Switch Force was developed by Way Forward, a studio known for making good games when they do. And Mighty Switch Force is definitely one of them, though it does feel a bit like most of the interest in this game came from it being one of the few original eShop games at the time. The art and music are phenomenal, and the gameplay of toggling a switch back and forth to make certain platforms appear or disappear, it's simple but fun and leads to some creative level designs. But when there's only 16 stages to go through, and originally there was even less before free update added more. I don't know, it feels a little too light. It's solid, but not substantial enough for you to really go out of your way to play it. This was the perfect, I have money left on my gift card game. Now V V V V V V, this was pretty great. It's similarly short, but the mechanic of reversing gravity is a bit more interesting, and that Commodore 64 game aesthetic is really unique as far as retro flavored indie games go. But that was the first year of Nintendo eShop. Pretty slim pickings, but I'm hopeful, maybe we'll get some something exciting soon, like Bye Bye Box Boy. Longest damn six years of my life.